Howdy. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Spaghetti Westerns podcast. I'm Tom Betts, your host. And again, this is season four, episode six, number 91. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to thank you all for the great responses for last week's uh, Fistful of Dollars special. Uh, I hope to do for a few dollars more on number 95 and then cap it off with 100 and do the good, the bad, and the ugly. So we'll see what happens. But uh, this week, we're going to talk about uh, the Man of the Cursed Valley and we'll talk a little bit about Ty Harden. Uh, Cello Alonzo will be our Who Are Those Gals? Uh, film of the week is a Juliana Gemma, Blood for a Silver Dollar, and then we'll have uh, Autograph of the Week, Book of the Week, CD, some posters, and wrap it up with uh, News of the Week. So let's get started. Um, History of the Spaghetti Westerns. We're going to talk about a pre- Fistful of Dollars, or was filmed around the same time, but it was called The Man of the Cursed Valley. Probably a lot of you haven't heard of this one. It's not available anywhere on VHS or DVD. Italian title was called L'Uomo della Valle Maladetta. Spanish title had two, El Hombre del Valle Maladito and Bodine. Uh, British title was called Cursed Valley. English title was The Man of the Cursed Valley. It's a 1964 Italian-Spanish film co-production, PEA out of, out of Rome, in Cooperativa Cinemagrafica, Phoenix out of Madrid. Producer was Paul Mao, M-O-U-G-H, which was an alias for Paola Mofa. Director was Omar Hopkins, which was apparently a Pseudonym for Cyril Marcellini. We'll talk about that when we get into the overview. Uh, story was by Eduardo Manzan Manzanos Brochero and Eduardo Di Lorenzo. Cinematography was by Remo Grisanti and Alfredo Fraley. Uh, music was by a combination of both Manuel Parada and Francesco Damasi. Lead actors were Johnny Walcott was played by Ty Harden. Gwen Burnett was played by Iran Yeroy. Torito was played by Peter Larry. Sam Burnett was played by Jose Nieto. Other familiar names in the cast are Father Ryan, played by John Bartha. Apache, played by Rafael Albayasin. Um, the Outlaws, Joe Camel. Uh, I'm going to make note this. Jose Canaleas, who we've covered before, often was used a pseudonym or the alias um, Joe Camel, but this is not that Joe Camel. This is Giuseppe Frizzaldi, and both of them were sometimes used Joe Camel with a C and Joe Camel or Jose Joe Camel with a K. This is uh, Giuseppe Frizzaldi, so don't go looking for Jose Canaleras. You'll never find him. Anyway, the story goes as such. Gwen, played by Iran Heroi, is married against the wishes of her father, Burnett, played by Jose Nieto, to an Indian named Torito, played by Peter Larry, and lives with his tribe. An enemy tribe kidnaps Gwen, but she escapes and is rescued by Johnny Walcott, played by Ty Harden. A cowboy, who after having made sure Gwen is all right, goes to Burnett to convince him to let his daughter recover from the ordeal at his home. Gwen, meanwhile, meanwhile has been found by Torito, which leads her to his hut, where they are joined by Burnett and Johnny. Torito refuses to go live on Burnett's ranch, and Gwen decides to return alone with her father. The two are accompanied by Johnny, who realizes that Gwen really loves her husband and decides to return to Torito to induce him to follow his wife. Meanwhile, the trib tribe of Indians who had kidnapped Gwen attacks Burnett's ranch, who, after a violent battle, is killed with all his men while Gwen is kidnapped again. After another adventure, she is freed by Johnny and Torito. Uh, this is an American looking small budget Western filmed in Spain. The film meanders all over the place and the kidnap 
Its kidnapped plot is repeated twice during the telling of the tale. Acting is average, and Hardin doesn't look too comfortable in his role. Uh, the film deals with mixed marriages in a rather mature way and was ahead of its time in this portrayal. The same plot was reused in 1967's Bullet in the Flesh with Rod Cameron. Uh, there's little real action until the film is almost three quarters of the way over and then the lead begins to fly. Mike Ferguson informed me that Omar Hopkins was a take on Hardin's real name of Orison Hungerford. Did Hardin direct some or all of the film and is Ciro Marcellini actually involved? His name never appeared as an alias for Hopkins until years later. Parada's uh, and Damasi's score is decent, but no spaghetti Western guitar effects, so it remains unmemorable. Hardin was known for not being able to memorize his lines of dialogue, so he was perfect as the strong silent gringo. As I said in the beginning, this film was never available on VHS or uh, DVD. You might find it on YouTube, but better yet, find it on eBay. I had a copy on VHS, but the ending was cut. So whether it's available anymore or not, I don't know. It's probably copied off of RAI TV. As far as actor profiles are concerned, Johnny Walcott, played by Ty Harden, will cover him in a moment in whatever became of. <coughs> Gwen Burnett was played by Iran Erie, who was born Elvira Teresa Eroy Sidi. Uh, she was born in Tehran, Iran on October 21st, 1937. She was raised in Spain where she learned Spanish and she entered a beauty contest where she was seen in her film career was started. Uh, and this, this film contest was held in Monaco and she was uh, then started her acting career before emigrating to Mexico in the late 1960s to become an actress, singer, and theater producer. She made 89 films and TV appearances from 1953 to 2001. Roy appeared in one other Euro Western, Zorro the Avenger, in 62 as Luisa. She died of a stroke in Mexico City on March 10, 2002, at the age of 64. Torito is played by Peter Larry. Real name is Piero Larry, L E R I. He was born in Catania, Sicily, Italy, on August 4, 1939. He made 30 film and TV appearances from 61 to 2005. He was best known for uh, his appearances in Triumph of Machiste in 61 and Hercules and the Masked Rider in 63. After his acting career started to fade, he turned to dubbing in the early 1980s. His other spaghetti westerns are Rick and John Conquers of the West in 67 in California in 1977. He died on March 1, 2017 in Varese, Lombardy, Italy. He was 77. The other leading actor in the film was Sam Burnett, played by Jose Nieto. Jose Garcia Nieto was born in Matalascanas, Huelva, Andalusia, Spain on May 3, 1902. He made over 106 film and TV appearances from 1925 to 1980. 15 of which were spaghetti westerns. He always played authority figures such as military officers, ranchers, and lawmen. Jose died in Murcia, Spain on August 10th, 1982. He was 80 years old. Okay, let's talk about the main star of the film, Ty Harden. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Ty Harden was born Orison Whipple Hungerford III in New York City on January 1, 1930. His parents divorced when he was five, and he moved to Texas with his mother and brother Carol Dewey. There he lived with his grandparents on a farm near Austin. His grandmother often referred to him as a typhoon, and the nickname Ty stuck. Harden claims it was taken from a bull he rode named Typhoon in a local rodeo when he was 14. Harden was in and out of trouble for most of his childhood, but managed to graduate from Lamar High School in Houston, Texas in 1949. 
He then att attended Blinn Junior College on a football scholarship and also spent a year at the Dallas Bible Institute before joining the U.S. Army, where he served three years in Korea and rose to the rank of lieutenant. After his honorable discharge, he attended Texas A&M University playing football and studying electrical engineering. He left college two weeks before graduation to take a job at McDonnell Douglas in California. One day, while venturing into Western costume in Hollywood to rent a costume for a Halloween party, he was discovered by a Paramount talent scout. He took a screen test and was then signed to a seven-year contract. After six films, he tried out for a role in the John Wayne film, Rio Bravo, but the part went to Ricky Nelson. Wayne was impressed by the young actor and put him in touch with William Orr at Warner Brothers. Orr was the brother-in-law of Jack Warner, who bought Ty's contract from Paramount. He changed Ty's last name to Harden after the famous gunfighter John Wesley Harden. When Clint Walker began having contract problems with Warner Brothers on his popular Xi'an TV series, he was temporarily replaced by Ty and Bronco. When his contract ended, he went to Europe to, and made eight spaghetti westerns. He also opened a chain of restaurant and bars before returning home to the USA. He, was put, he, he put his year of Bible college to use becoming a TV evangelist and after a multiple tax disputes with the IRS started an anti-tax organization which became a militia group called the Arizona Patriots and he even ran for president. Ty retired and attended many celebrity film conventions selling his autograph and mingling with fans. He was married eight times. Among his wives were 1961 Miss Universe Marlene Schmidt from 62 to 65 and actress Jenny Atkins 71 to 74. He had 10 children. Ty Harden died from the effects of Alzheimer's in Huntington Beach, California on August 3, 2017. He was 87. Ty's films were The Man of the Cursed Valley, which we just covered, 1964. Custer of the West in 67 played Major Marcus Reno. Death on Sunday, 1970 film that was never made. Also, Hyde Friend, Sabata's Back, 1970, as he played Sabata, but that film was never made. The Last Rebel in 1970 as the sheriff. Your jinxed friend, you've met Sacramento in 1970 as Jack Sacramento Thompson. It was on this film he met Jenny Aguder, who he, I'm, I'm sorry, Jenny Atkins, who he married. Then he made Drummer of Vengeance in 71 as The Stranger. Holy Water Joe in 71 as Jeff Donovan. And he uh, ended his career in Vendetta at Dawn in 71 as Jonathan Benton. Then he returned to the state and appeared in several TV-made westerns, low-budget westerns. Okay, let's turn our attention to the Who Are Those Gals, and it's Cello Alonzo. Uh. Okay, Cello was born Isabel Apollinia Garcia Hernandez in Lugareno, Cuba, on April 10, 1933. Her father was Cuban, her mother Mexican. Initially, she found stardom as a dancer at the National Theater in Havana. This led to her appearing at the famous Follies Bergere in Paris, where she was billed as the Cuban bombshell. Her notoriety as a dancer led to a film career. She first appeared in the 1959 film, Nel Segno de Roma. American title was Sheba and the Gladiator, starring Anita Ekberg and George Marshall. Her erotic dance number drew such attention that her picture and name became more prominent on the t movie's publicity posters. This role led to a total of 13 films in 1959 and 1960 alone, mostly roles in peplum films. In 1960, while making Morgan the Pirate, Alonzo met and married Aldo Pamelia, a production manager and producer. After, after that, she made with him Quattro Noti con Alba, The Desert War, War in 1962. And they had a son, Aldino Pamelia, and then she retired. During a visit to, to Aldo in Spain, where he was the production supervisor, on The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, 
she made a brief uncredited cameo as Stephen's wife. Pamelia then executive produced uh, no, her auspicious comeback. She played opposite her countryman Tomas Melian in Run Man Run as Dolores, which is arguably her best film role in her career. Cello then made a brief appearance in a variation of that previous role, also called Dolores in another Western called Night of the Serpent or Nest of Vipers with Luke Askew. This would be her last film appearance and she abandoned the film scene and focused on Italian TV. After the death of her husband in 1986, Alonzo moved to the city of Siena in Tuscan, Italy. She retired from film and started a cat breeding business and started a small farm which became a four-star hotel and restaurant. One of her last appearances was on a 2014 episode of Stray Cult with spaghetti Western actresses Simone Blondell, Marissa Longo, and Nicolette Machiavelli. Uh, this thing is on YouTube, so take a look for it. Cello Alonso died on February 20th, 2019 in Montana, Rome, Italy at the age of 85. Okay, uh, her films include The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly as Mrs. Mondrega or Stevens in 66, Run Man Run as Dolores in 67, Again as Dolores in Night of the Serpent in 68. Uh, she appears in arch archive footage in 1968's Western Italian style. And as I just mentioned on the Stray Colt 2014 TV appearance in Le Donna del Western Italiano as herself. Okay, let's now turn to Film of the Week. Okay, film of the week is a Juliana Gemma film from 65 called Blood for a Silver Dollar. Italian title is in Dollar Bucato. French title is Le Dollar Through. The UK title is One Silver Dollar. English titles are Die Now, Pay Later, Blood on a Silver Dollar, and Blood for a Silver Dollar. It was a 65 Italian French film co production. Dorica Film, Explorer, 58 Phono Film in, from Rome, and Les Films, Corona, out of Paris. Director is Kelvin Jackson Paget, who is an alias for Giorgio Ferroni. Story was by George Finley, who is Giorgio Stagani, under a different alias. Screenplay was by Stagani and Giorgio Ferroni. Cinematography was by Tony Dry, who is actually Antonio Secchi. There's an Eastman Color and Cinemascope. Music is by Gianni Ferio. Uh, songs include A Man of Storio by Fred Bongusto and Give Me Back, sung by Lydia McDonald. Film runs 96 minutes. The main actors are Gary O'Hara, played by Montgomery Wood, who is actually Gemma. Judy O'Hara, played by Evelyn Stewart. Mc McCory, Mc Max Corey, McCoy, or a Aloysius McKenzie was played by Peter Cross. Philip or Phil Blackie O'Hara was played by Nicholas St. John. So, some other notable names are Sheriff played by George Artis Anderson, which was Frank Farrow, whose real name is Francesco Fantasia. Farmer was played by Andrew Scott, who's Andrea Scotty. Donaldson, John McDouglas. James or Jim was played by Benny Reeves, who's Benito Stefanelli. We'll see a homesteader in here, played by Pedro Sanchez. Stage master was played by Franco Gula. Mob leader, Fortunato Arena. Soldier, played by our friend Jeff Cameron. And the story goes as such. Former Confederate Army Captain Gary O'Hara, played by Juliana Gemma, is sent home after the end of the Civil War with the barrel of his gun cut off. This joke by the Union soldiers will become a vital part of the story, story later on in the film. O'Hara now wants to start a new life in the West with his wife, Judy, played by Evelyn Stewart, but has a difficult time finding a job. Gary stumbles into the town of Yellowstone, where he's offered a job by McCory or McCoy, played by Pierre Cressoy, or Peter Cross, who in the sheriff's absence wants Gary to bring in an outlaw named Blackie, played by Nazareno Zamperla. When the town meet, 
O'Hara recognizes the outlaw to be his brother Phil. Too late, he is shot but saved from death by a silver dollar he was carrying in his breast pocket. Blackie is then gunned down McCoy's henchman. When the smoke clears, Gary learns Blackie wasn't a criminal, but had been hired by the local townspeople to protect them from McCoy and his henchmen. Returning home to recover from his wound, he learns his wife has fallen into the hands of McCoy. He tries to get Sheriff Anderson, played by Franco Fantasia, to help, but finds out he is just another henchman of McCoy's. Gary, on his own, cleans up the town, and he faces off in a duel with a ringleader. And this is where the sawed-off gun barrel comes into play. I won't give away the ending, but O'Hara gains the respect of the town and is able to begin a new life with his wife by his side. <coughs> Excuse me. Film review. It was filmed in Italy at Elio Studios on Casar della Pietreci Tolfa, Italy, where the house where Gemma is kept as a prisoner has been used in many spaghetti westerns, including... Death Rides a Horse. It's the house in the background where Bill lives as an adult. Plenty of action scenes showing off Gemma's outstanding acrobatics and athletic ability. The beating scene of Gary O'Hara, pattern after the man with no name, starts to become a regular feature in spaghetti westerns. Ferio's whistling score adds to the enjoyability of the film, even if it is more reminiscent of an American western than a spaghetti western. Photography is well done and the direction is tight. Stagani keeps the story moving while building up the tension. Well worth the effort to locate a copy. It's available from Amazon for 30, bu 30 bucks from a company called Zeus for $9.99 online. Also, the DVD Lady in Italian with English subtitles, you can buy it there for 12 bucks. Like I said, it's well worth viewing. Actor profiles, Gary O'Hara. Played by Montgomery Wood, is an alias for Juliana Gemma. Born in 38, he died in 2013, and we previously covered him in his own episode number 41. Judy O'Hara, played by Evelyn Stewart, is an alias for Ida Gali. He was born in 39, she's still living. She was previously covered in episode 6 on the top 20 actresses. McCory, Max Corey, McCoy, Aloysius McKenzie, is played by Peter Cross. His real name is Piero Crossoy. He was his real name is Pierre Jules Lazar Cresson. He was born in Vendome, France on March 25, 1924. He was a theater and film actor who appeared in around 50 films from 1947 to 1972. He was actually signed by Paramount Pictures in the United States to a contract in 1952. He appeared in five spaghetti westerns and is probably best remembered for his role as Dr. Chester Lynn in 1966 Navajo Joe, starring Burt Reynolds. Crisoy died in Gorbio, France on October 31, 1980. He was only 56. And Philip or Phil Blackie O'Hara was played by Nicholas St. John, who's actually Nazareno Zamperla, who was an Italian stuntman and actor. He was born in Treviso, Veneto, Italy on, on, on sorry, April 25, 1937. He is the younger brother of stuntman actor Ronaldo Zamperla, who was born in 32 and died in 2011. The Zamperlas were part of a circus family in Nazareno, began his career as a stuntman in the early 1950s, sword and sandal films. When the spaghetti western craze came into play, he became a supporting actor and was sometimes billed as Nick Anderson. He became good friends with Juliana Gemma and appeared with him in several films. He appeared in 20 spaghetti westerns before his death on March 19, 2020, at the age of 82. Okay, let's get into Autograph of the Week. Okay, this one is by Kilo Henderson. <coughs> A story about Kilo Henderson. Excuse me, I met him in a uh, Western set and film festival in Arizona called Rawhide. 
outside of Scottsdale. I was introduced to him by uh, Neil Summers, and I had no idea who Kilo Henderson was at that time. And Kilo said, oh, yeah, I was in a couple of European Westerns, Carl May films, Treasure of the Aztecs and Pyramid of the Sun Gods. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, here we go. Someone giving me a line. I didn't check them out until I got home. Anyways, Kilo said, what's your name? I said, Tom Betts. And he said, how do you spell that last name? He said, I said, Betts, B-E-T-T-S. And he said, come here, man, I want you to meet somebody. So he took me over to a couple of booths, and there was his wife, and I introduced him. He introduced me to his wife, and he said, tell her what your name is. I said, Tom Betts. And she looked. they looked at each other, and she said, Thomas Betts? I said, yes, and they both started to laugh. And she said, well, before I met Kilo and married him, I was married to Thomas Betts. And my son is Tom Betts. So from that point on, whenever I'd meet him, and I'd meet him a couple of times a year at uh, the Golden Boot Awards or at different film festivals, whenever I saw her, I called her mom. So it was an inside joke with us. But uh, he was a great guy. He uh, was a manager of a trailer park and took pictures at all the uh, Golden Boot Awards. Finally got his own Golden Boot Award, but he was a, a great guy. And he was... Um, uh, taught fast gun work to all the uh, different actors that he appeared with. Another side story is if you remember back in the 50s, early 60s, Mattel had a gun that they would sell. And uh, the guy who would, the kid who would show it off was Maddie Mattel. And his brother would pop up in some commercials too. Well, those were his uh, Kilo's son. And he taught him all the tricks of the gun. So Maddie Mattel was actually Kilo Henderson's son. Okay, let's move along to Book of the Week. Okay, this is a real oddball, but for you uh, collectors of soundtracks and are interested in the music, this is Mana Mana, Piero Emiliana y la Sua musical. And it's strictly about... Piero, all his films are listed in here, biography, it's in Italian. What's cool about it is it was made in 2016 by Gianluca Tosi, T-O-S-I, is the author by Bloodbuster, and it actually contains back here a 45 RPM with several of uh, Piero's scores, including Mana Mana. Uh, side note on Mana Mana, the guy who actually does the mana mana and all of that is Alessandro Alessandroni. So that will conclude our book of the week. Now let's move to CD of the week. Okay, CD of the week is Blood for a Silver Dollar. And it's this CD right here. But before that one came out, the uh, Massacre, I'm sorry, Man of the, what did, we call, what did we finally end up calling that one? Man of the Valley. Anyways, that that's came out. I want to show this one first. And it's on a uh, uh, CD with two other titles on it. Man of the Cursed Valley, I'm sorry. Music is by French Coast Damasi. Uh, sometimes they're given scores with Parada, and I'm guessing that one score was released in Italy under Damasi, and the Spanish score would be released under Parada. Whether they're different scores or the same score, I've never been able to find out. I'm guessing they were individual scores, but I've never seen a Parada score released. Okay, uh, Blood for a Silver Dollar. Is done by Johnny Ferrio. This CD came out in Italy in 2013. It's number uh, by Digit Movies. It's on CDD M245. It has 27 tracks, listing time of 51 minutes and 54 seconds. Uh, before that, I don't know if I've sent the, uh, them, the producer, a picture of the LP that came out, but the LP came out on Phoenix. And it was number uh, PHCAM02 in 1984. And it only had 11 tracks of music. So you can see why a lot of us have LPs and CDs of the same score because there was more music released. 
Uh, the LP only had 18 minutes and 3 seconds. The CD today is worth about 20 bucks. The LP is worth 50 bucks. I also came across this LP, and this LP came out recently in 2019. Of course, the new LPs are put on colored vinyl. This one is both silver and red. It was released on Silver Screen Records Limited. Uh, like I said, in 2019, it's number S-I-L-L-P-1579. It has 21 tracks of uh, listening. Uh, there's no listening time I can find anywhere. And this one's valued at 35 minutes. Okay, now we'll dwell into uh, Tom's poster attic. <laughs> Okay, Man of the Cursed Valley. That is the uh, Belgium poster. Pretty generic. Then we get into Blood for a Silver Dollar. This is the German ad map. We've gone over these before. Complete storyline on the back and cast. Here's the Belgium poster. Pretty generic, but at least it's not just photos. And this is the uh, Italian window poster. Again, generic. If they didn't have the names down there, you wouldn't know who they were. And again, he's billed as Montgomery Wood. Okay, last but not least, we'll talk about the weekly news. Okay, for you uh, record collectors, music collectors, these don't come out very often anymore. There's a new Italian LP release of Continuo of Anua Chiamaro Trinity, which is Trinity is Still My Name, which came out in 72. Uh, the music is composed by, composed by the DeAngelis brothers, Guido and Maurizio. Film stars, as we know, Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill. Uh, this LP was released on July 10th of 2022 it's on beat b-e-a-t and the number is d-d-j-l-p-12 d-l-x it's got 19 tracks of music and a listing time of 37 minutes and 39 seconds this is a limited special edition lp it includes all 13 tracks from the original lp lp plus six bonus tracks the soundtrack was released once before in 2017 the CD of the 2017 version is the largest release to date with 25 tracks, but there have never been more tracks on the LP because the 2017 LP only considered consisted of 15 tracks. Okay, the rest of the, uh, the news is uh, Boot Hill. And unfortunately, there's a couple of favorites. Uh, rest in peace, LQ Jones. Uh, legendary Western character actor L.Q. Jones died in his Hollywood home on July 9th from natural causes. He was 94. Born Justice Ellis McQueen in Beaumont, Texas on August 19, 1927, he took his stage name from his first film role in 1955's Battle Cry. His film roles, roles include The Wild Bunch, Major Dundee, Ride the High Country, and Pat Garrett the, and Billy the Kid. LQ appeared in one Spaghetti Western, 1972's The Hunting Party, as Hog Warren, along with Gene Hackman and Oliver Reed. Uh, LQ used to show up at almost all of the word on Westerns. Uh, he was in great shape up until the end. Fantastic storyteller. And it's a really it was really a shock to see him uh, go. I saw a listing on Facebook. I had not heard anything from uh, both Rob Word and Cindy Mitchum, that he was ill, so it must have come quickly. But uh, rest in peace, LQ, you were great. Okay, next we have, and you probably won't recognize this name, but he's uh, obvious to some of us, Tony Benarelli. Antonio Benarelli was born on September 16, 1940 in Rome, and around the age of 30, he became interested in illusion and card magic. 
He then took part in TV shows, but success came with Corrado and his Domenica. So much so that in the years that followed, after expanding his repertoire to include mentalism and paranormal phenomena and involving the public in his shows, he ventured into the performing and designing magic programs. He then became an actor for RAI dramas and a stunt devil for several films. He was a familiar face on TV. His hands were even more familiar in the movies. He shuffled cards very quickly and created incredible games like in the famous Terence Hill poker game, In Trinity is Still My Name. It was Tony Benarelli's hands that were used for Terence Hill's. Benarelli appeared in three spaghetti westerns, Trinity is Still My Name in 71, Alleluia and Sartana of God in 72, and The Genius in 75. And this just came down today. Uh, rest in peace, Hermano Longo. According to a post on the Italian dubbing website, Il Mondo dei Doppiatori, Italian actor and novelist Hermano Longo died on July 14th, 2022. He was born Mario Longo in Poggiorato, Lecce, Italy on May 24th, 1933. Longo was a 1953 graduate of Centro Sperimentale de Cinematography, that's CSS, I'm sorry, CSC, in Rome. Longo received his only star billing in his screen debut, the adventure drama Moana Virgin of the Amazon, 1955, filmed in Venezuela. After this, he was almost invariably cast as a supporting actor. He was seen in sword and sandal films, war films, and spaghetti westerns. He was hang, and most of us know him as Grant Laramie, and he appeared in many international co-productions alongside English-speaking genre actors like Lex Barker, Gordon Mitchell, Don McGowan, John Erickson, and Mark Forrest. By the 1970s until his quasi-retirement in 1981, he worked as a dubbing artist, providing the voice for numerous cartoon characters, as well as for foreign actors like Hal Holbrook, Jack Hawkins, Louise Gossett Jr., and Patrick McGee. Hermano appeared in six Euro Westerns, Charge of the Seventh and 64 as a lawman, Adios Gringo in 65 as Stan Clevenger, billed as Grant Laramie. My Gun is the Law in 1965 as Mark, again billed as Grant Laramie. Five Giants from Texas, 1966, is Jim Lattimore. I'll Sell My Skin Dear Dearly in 67 as Father Dominic Magdalena as Grant Laramie. And $20,000 for, $20, for seven in 68 as Sheriff Bill Cochran. He was, here he was billed as Herman Lang, which is a takeoff on his real name. Okay, thanks for joining us. I uh, hope to see you again next week with uh, episode 92. Until then, adios amigos. This is a Roberto. <laughs> I'm not even going to say it anymore. Talk to you uh, next next week. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Adios amigos.